Hello again, welcome to Up Next, our regular Rovers Roundtable. We're back in uh, the fitness centre, the gym, uh, with the, uh, the guys going through uh, a bit of weights work. And we're looking ahead to a huge game back here at Fortress Post Office Road, the Millennium Stadium, Monday night against the Bradford Bulls, who have picked up a couple of big results already this season. We're looking to get the place packed out for that. So uh, we'll look ahead to that and debrief uh, the latest big victory, which was uh, at this past weekend over Newcastle Thunder. In the company of three men who knows what it's like to play for Bradford Bulls. Dan Fleming's here, Matty Wildey's here, and Leon Price is with us as well. Uh, gentlemen, great to see you. Leon, let's start with you. Um, we'll get on to Bradford in due course, but in terms of digesting what, what we went through at the weekend, it, it was a big victory, a big scoreline, but there was plenty to work on, wasn't there, there as well for you and the coaching staff? Yeah, I think overall we were pretty happy with the result. I thought we looked a little patchy in, uh, in, in good ball with the attack at some, at some parts, but I thought we defended really, really well. Uh, to keep them to six points uh, on the back of a breakaway try was really pleasing. So we reached our defensive targets, but just a few areas to fix up in attack, which we'll, we'll be working on in this week in training. And, and, and they did make it scrappy as well. They had the hands in the rook and, and slowed the game down. At, at, at kind of If they played at our pace, and it, you know, the scoreline could have ended up a lot bigger. So they did the, what they needed to do to, to keep the, the, the scoreline respectable, really. Was that the key frustration as, as players speaking I think it was Jack Bussey I spoke to after the Hooter on the pitch and he he was quite frustrated by the kind of niggly nature of the stop start nature of the game was that the main frustration for you guys Matty? Yeah and I think it's probably going to be a bit like that um, I think teams have will have a plan to come to come to us and, and sort of put our, us off our game but it's up to us as, as players to to not get frustrated with that and, and just keep playing our game and like Leon's just touched on there I think um, we're really happy with how we sort of defended that game. Um, we worked on that through the week and, and putting things right like that. So, uh, yeah, we were happy with the intensity and, the, and how we defended Newcastle. Uh, that was your first rugby of the season, wasn't it? How, how was it for you out there? Yeah, um, obviously, I know I got the sim bin, which... Yeah, well, talk us through that, because I actually missed that in commentary, because yeah. I was looking at something else. Um, I didn't really... Obviously, I just saw Brisk's feet go above his head and I just kind of did take liking to it. So, um, I know we had a bit of a telling off during the week that not to be running in, so it's my own fault. But, no, it was good. It was good to get out there, obviously. Not as long as I'd like to, but my own fault, really. But, um, but no, yeah, hopefully we can, I can build on this and then if selected, I can take it forward, yeah. And how's it been for you so far? You've watched this terrific start, kind of waiting patiently for your opportunity. How have you viewed it from, you know, the sideline? Well, obviously it's brilliant. Like we're all in it for one goal. Like, and obviously everyone, everyone who's involved in Featherston knows what that goal is. Um, but I think like Sean's obviously touched on it when he does his post-match and pre-match. We're not bothered about anyone else. We're just taking it a game at a time, really, and just everything else will take care of itself. Uh, speaking, Leon, to Newcastle's head coach, uh, who you'll know, Chris Thorman, who actually did one of your old jobs at, at Workington for, for a long time him, himself. I was speaking to him before the game and he kind of admitted that they have targets and coming to Featherstone and getting a win wasn't necessarily a re realistic target of them. A lot of the teams will probably have that approach now, won't they? Because of the strong nature of the start that Featherstone have made, looking at coming here and thinking, actually, we might not get anything. Um, possibly. I don't really ever concentrate on other teams and what they're thinking and what their targets are. We just... As a team and as a group, we've set our standards defensively, attacking-wise. And you know, like you say, Flem just said, we're going to into, into it one game at a time. But we only really concentrate on ourselves, uh, and we know that for us, sometimes it's a game within a game. So we need to make sure that we set and get to our targets uh, week in, week out in training, and uh, make sure our standards are very, very, very high. So that when we come into a really, really intense game against a team like Bradford team like Halifax or Widness and teams that are really genuinely going to be pushing for promotion that you know, we're ready to go and we're not undercooked we're ready to go right there and then. Well, we have and we've talked a lot about the, the, the leadership group that we have this year as well Matthew of which you're part of that so how uh, how do you make sure that, that you guys that the, the senior figures who we see having these little meetings and um, with, with Sean and, and, and Leon how, how do you make sure you mirror exactly what the the coaching staff want from you out there and how do you take on that responsibility yourself to make sure the rest of the team knows exactly what's what's at stake yeah it starts off by um things you do away from the away from the club as well um 
making sure that you prepare right for training, you pre you're preparing right for the game that week, um, making sure we do our gym properly and, and just keeping on top of that and making sure that everyone's reaching them standards. Um, and if they're not, then it's up for us as, as uh, players and the leadership group to, to sort of cut that out and, and get on top of it straight away. So, um, yeah, it's been really good so far and, and everyone's been bang on, so there's no complaints from us. And when we talk, Dan, about standards, professionalism, this is a team that needs to now view itself as a Super League club because that's where the target is. Have you noticed, uh, I don't know if it's so much a change coming into this year, it, there's a different feel. I, I feel, being around the place, there's a different feel that you've, you've kind of tuned in already to, right, we need to be a Super League club starting now. I think... Um... I think everyone, like the top end clubs, I think they're all kind of changing that mentality now. Like, um, but I think how Sean and Leon have come in, everything's, there's no walking to anything, everything's got a reason. They're not doing something just for a purpose. It's all, all driving for either the game day at the weekend or for the ultimate goal, really. But um, professionalism, like the boys, like you can see behind, they're all doing stuff on their own. There's, on their own in his WhatsApp groups, he's on um, nipping to. I think they've got to deal with the gym. Like yeah. I'm nipping there for that if anyone's in for extra. So the, the standards are always there. So it's just we just need to keep keep them as high as we can really towards the end of the season. And as players, is is that what you want? You want to be you want to be driven. You want to be pushed. You don't want to coast, do you? You don't want an easy ride as a you know as a sportsman who's been paid to do this kind of thing. No, no. Well, I think I, I think we won't be we won't be at this team aiming for promotion if. If you if you didn't want to do that, if that makes sense. So like, obviously we're all sportsmen. We we, we want to win. At yeah. the end of the day, so that's the main reason. That's his main goal. So if you surround yourself with people wanting the same thing, it's it's, it's a good, it can only be a good thing, and only good things can come. I want to talk about Bradford. I should have mentioned actually, as a Wales international, we're recording on St David's Day. Yeah. Is that something that that resonates with you? Uh, a little bit because I I qualify through, I qualify through heritage, so it's um, obviously. The family side of things that that does, but um, I was going to say it's not the strongest Welsh twang that no, I'm, I'm hearing in your voice. No, you could probably speak to Kyle. He's he's as Welsh as they come, to be honest. But <laughs> um, no, yeah, like I'm very passionate about playing for Wales and stuff like that. So it's a massive honour every, every time I do and get the chance to. Well, you mentioned actually Kyle Evans. There is a little kind of mini Wales core, isn't there? Yeah. Here at Fever with with Copy yeah. uh, as well. And I think Copy's probably got the same Welsh accent as me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, like like I say. It's, it's good and like you, you know you play against players and stuff like that so it's you, you know everyone as well so it's, it's good really uh, let's talk about Bradford it feels big doesn't it uh, this it, I mean Bradford fixtures as, as you three will know are always big fixtures regardless of how well Bradford are doing but the way they've started the season Leon and a couple of eye-catching results yes beating Widnes but beating Toulouse as well this feels like it's going to be a really good early test of where you guys are with Bradford a very hungry Bulls side, I'm sure, coming here. Yeah, I think this is the first time in a number of years that I think Bradford are genuine, uh, have a genuine chance of getting promotion and you know fighting for the top, fighting for the top places. As you say, I think the board have backed Mark Dunning heavily. They've brought in Super League play, ex Super League players, Michael Lawrence, Joe Rundle. Uh, they've got Apo Apo over um, from Australia, so they've, they've they've backed him with the signings that they've got. They're getting done. Jill Reg with Leeds, so. Team stacked with players that you know are high quality, so it's going to make it um, a much, much better game, a good game, a good contest for, for the viewers, and a good, a good challenge for us as a team, players, coaching staff, and the, uh, the full group to, to have a big challenge. Yeah. What was your experience, Matty, of, of playing at Bradford? Leon's really nicely described there, like a great team, perhaps now on its way back. Did you always have the feeling when you were playing there that I don't know if sleeping giant is the right expression because they've had so many problems, but that, but it, did it feel kind of special? Yeah, um, they've always got that big club mentality from where they've been in the past. Um, so they're, they're always driving that and and just touching on on how they've started this year. Um, I think they'll be confident coming here and why wouldn't they be? They've, they've had a couple of really good results uh, against the top to lose side. So we're going to be have to have to be on our on, at our best on on Monday to to beat them and, and we're looking forward to it. What was your experience of, of playing with the Bulls? Yeah, good. And like you say, like Matty touched on, like all the history and stuff like that. It's, it's I've I've kind of grown up supporting Stuart Fielding, Jamie Peacock, same yeah. type of people. So 
Yeah. Leon Price. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I wasn't I want quick enough. I always went for the middles. I wasn't quick enough to, to follow him. But, um, but yeah, but it, like, to, to pull on a bull shirt, it was it an honour, like, yeah. if that makes sense, um, like growing up watching it. So they have got that. Um, but like I say, I think they're going to be coming. They're going to give, bring their best. And obviously, hopefully, we can. Well, I know we, we'll be on top form, ready to go. So Yeah, it'll keep you on your toes, like games. The big games are what, what you, what, what it's all about, I guess. Yeah, like, like, like as I said before, every sportsman they want to play in them big games. Like obviously, just playing playing the sport we love is brilliant anyway. But that's what you play it for to play in them games. Is it extra special for you, Leon, trying to plot the downfall of a club where, well, I was going to say you you were you are a Bradford Bulls legend, and now you're in a position where you're working to try and get one over on them. Um, yeah, obviously it's it's, it's fantastic. It's I think it's enjoyable as a group. Not, it's not about me. It's about the group. I think as a group and a, and a club and a team, um, to come against a, a team that's in really good form, live on television on a Monday night after you've put you know, a long pre-season in and we've been tip-tapping for good form, picking up the form. It's just a good test to see where you are at this stage of the season. You know, win or lose, it, it doesn't make, mean that you know, it's not going to have much of a bearing on the season. But it's a really good test to see where we are, we're at right at this moment in time. You know, we're, we're sitting nice at top of the table, four wins from four. Uh, what are they? I think they've only lost one game, haven't they, this season against York. So it's a real good test for us now to see where we're at in an intense game. You know, it's not about me, it's about the group and, and the club. So oh, I can't wait for it, it's going to be good. Do you echo what Leon's saying about that feeling that this is, this is the closest feeling that to, to Bradford being maybe on the way back, Matty? Do you, do you feel that too? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a couple of their games and, and they're improving every week. Um, so for us this week, we like I said before, we're going to be have to have to be at our best, um, and we, yeah, we are sitting top of the table at the minute, four from four. But uh, we're not done there. We're not finished at that. We want to keep improving each week, and there's always things in our game that we want to we want to get better at. So uh, we'll be working hard this week to to put in a good performance come Monday. I want to ask you all how how big a role. The fans playing this, we're talking about Bradford aside, and I remember this from my youth, going and watching a game at Oddsville, it was very, very intimidating. You always felt like your team was going to lose before you even got in, because it was just this closed bowl. You know you were going to get a really good side, but you know you were going to get a really loud vocal support. So how important, Dan, is it that we make this place similar? Definitely. Like I think, I think it's good. They, I know they travel well, don't they? But I think the, I think we can't take too much on the fact that they've beaten to lose. Because obviously, yeah, don't get me wrong, they're going to bring the thing. But Halifax were third last year, and we, like, we absolutely no disrespect to them, but we, we did a good job on them. So I don't think, like you say, I, I, I don't think we should be knocking what we're doing ourselves. Like you say, we're at top at table, sitting too clear. So I think we need to, we need to be confident going in, but. We need to be improving and backing ourselves, and obviously with the fans here, that can that can really help us. And obviously, hopefully, we can get a lot more down as well, which is good to the big games. Yeah, that's the point, isn't it, Leon? That's that's something we really want to get right here at, you know, a bouncing post office road, a, a Ram Millennium Stadium gives, well, you, you will know, gives the players such an edge. We've had some big crowds, we've had some slightly under par crowds so far this season. I'm looking at this fixture against Bradford as one that, I, if I was a playing fan, I wouldn't want to miss this. No, I think as a rugby, as a neutral, if I was speaking neutral, it's a game you definitely want to watch. I think it's two quite evenly matched teams, both fighting for that top end of the table. Bradford coming back to the best. Feather, well, you know, we're four from four. So, you know, as a fan, I think as a neutral, everybody would want to watch this game, either on television. And if local, our supporters can get down and give us that extra voice, be that 18th man on the field, then it's all the more better for us. You know, that encouragement when you're in tough periods at game, if you've got that crowd behind you, it does really just give you that extra help, that extra... Extra lift. That's something, Matt, you've said to me on a number of occasions, when, especially when you're playing down the hill and you've got the crowd in, in fine voice, it's almost like another, another couple of points on the board for you. Yeah, and they, and they definitely do make a lot of noise. Um, so it, it's really important that we try and get as many people down here on Monday and, and give us that push. Um, I know that Bradford, they'll be bringing plenty of fans, so hopefully it'll be a great atmosphere and we can pack, we'll pack Post Office Road out and, and uh, make a good, good event of it. Uh, Injury-wise, present company, I think we're all right. You're okay, aren't you? Touch wood. Touch wood. You're, apart from the tights, you're all right, Matty? Uh, I think um, you've just come fresh from the, the coaching office with, with Sean Long, get, getting prepared ahead of the Bradford game. Um, there have been a few 
injuries are picked up. You know, you start the season, you have all these plans, and then suddenly, you know, freak injury, Craig Hall, Hankinson's picked up a problem uh, with his back. Mark Carella's not back yet. There are a few little curveballs being thrown at you guys. Yeah, but that's that's what playing rugby and managing a squad's all about. That's why I have a squad and not a team. Um, like any championship winning team, squad, should I say, sorry, always had as as adversity, there's always injuries that you've got to cover up and players that have got to come in, do a job and always be ready to play and it's, you know, you're never going to have the same 17 playing week in, week out for 30 games and if you do that then you've, you know, you've hit the jackpot, you've, you've won the lottery and you're, you're very, very lucky so it's about managing the players, managing the team, sometimes players have form, they're out of form, some are injured, some are tired, some need a rest, some have come into form so it's just about managing those, those players accordingly and yeah, we've got four or five out but we've got four or five that can come in that are just you know, more than capable and more than good enough for coming and proving a point and then they can keep the place in the team if they're playing well so it's just part of life it's part of rugby that's what it is you can't, can't worry about it so how, do you, how do you and Sean do that how, how big a part of your job is that I mean a squad like this this is one of the best squads I've seen at, at this level of rugby league to leave players out but keep them happy and keep them ready and keep them fit so that when they're needed they're bang on it when they come in and I'm looking at this weekend thinking Probably Brandon Pickerskill, who's, who's been left out, is now going to get an opportunity because of injury against his whole club. And you, you guys, your responsibility is to make sure he's he's ready to go. I think number one thing is to make sure that you're honest with the players, give them the reason why they're not playing. Sometimes you might not, you know, sometimes you might not just fancy. You might fancy one player over another player for no reason. But if you're honest with them and up front that, and, and keep them on board and keep them feel like they're part of the group. And when it's time to come in, everybody's happy. You know, there's no sulking. Make them, fit, you know, everybody continue to socialise with each other, work hard. You know, playing rugby in professional sport, it's always about how you handle disappointment, not about how you handle triumph and success. So when you have these little moments about you keeping fit, training extra hard, getting ready so that when it's your chance, you take that opportunity. So as long as the coaches are honest with the boys and there's good communication, and hopefully everybody stays on board. That's a brilliant rallying cry. That's almost got me going. So I'll, I'll play if you want at the weekend. I'll have a go. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Number one. Yeah, I could do a job. Not a very good job, but I could certainly do one. Um, we're just about out of time, so let's, Matty, leave the last word to you as part of the leadership group. To, to any Rovers fan watching this up next, thinking, yeah, I'm fancy a bit of that, a bit of Rovers against, against Bradford. What, what would you say to any fan thinking of coming down over the weekend? I just think it's a. It's an event it's, that you don't want to miss. Um, we're improving each game, um, so we'll be at our best on Monday. Bradford are improving, so it's definitely one that you're not going to want to miss. And, and uh, the, the people who come down, the fans, I think it'll, it'll strive us to, to go that extra little push uh, in games when it's, when it's tough. So, yeah, up to see everyone down here on Monday night. Uh, really looking forward to it. I'll let you go and join the rest of the training session. Dan, great to see you, mate. Yeah, you. Uh, always a pleasure, Mattia and Leon as well. Let's hope we see you Monday night. Get your tickets from the club shop or go online. Featherstone Rovers versus Bradford Bulls is up next.